Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 15. In this exercise, we're going to apply some of the labeling and stylization that we discussed earlier in the chapter to some of the new pipes and structures in the, in the project. The first thing we're asked to do is apply the Sea Storm Walls in Profile style to all storm pipes in the drawing. Now that might seem kind of uh, kind of like a daunting task, but we can use some of the tools in the software to make this go pretty quickly. Now if I select one of the pipes, storm pipes in the drawing, and I pick Select Similar, that selects all of the pipes that are similar, obviously. So I can right click and pick Properties, but I notice that they're already set to, uh, to this style. And what's interesting about Select Similar in the case of pipes is it sees pipes in one network as being similar, but not similar to pipes in another network. So what I did when I used the Select Similar option, it only picked pipes that were in the, the network uh, of the pipe that I selected. So in order to take care of the Storm 2 pipes, I'm going to have to click one of those and hit Select Similar. And now I can go to Properties and look at the Style setting and change it to Sea Storm Walls in Profile. And that'll handle all of them, all 13 of them at once. And if I go over into the Profile view, let's say for Madison Lane, you can see that the Walls style has been applied to the Storm. Now labels are a little different. They're actually less selective. If I pick a Structure label, it doesn't care what type of label it is or what style it is. It just pretty much picks up all Structure labels, even ones that are sanitary. Alright, so I want to be careful, and actually what I picked was a pipe label. If I pick a structure label and say select similar, you can see that it picked up sanitary labels as well as storm labels. So that's not going to work too well. I'm going to have to pick these one at a time, which isn't that big of a problem because there aren't many of them. So I'm going to pick each one of the storm structure labels, and what we're asked to do is change the style of them to Sea Storm name only. All right, so that greatly simplifies the label, and that's no problem because we're going to place all of these, um, all of these, all this information in a table. Now we want to do that for the pipe labels also. So I'm going to go through and pick all the pipe labels. I could have, well, I guess I was thinking I could have done them all at once, but I guess not because they're different objects. So let's change this to Sea Storm name only. And I think that takes care, oh, we got one right here. Let's see if I missed any more. Looks like everything is set to name only. So now what I'll do is we've, we're all, we've also been asked to label the remaining storm pipes and structures using that same style, or that same set of styles. So I'm going to launch the add labels command and use pipe network, entire network plan, and we'll use sea storm name only, sea storm name only. I'll click add and because I picked entire network it's going to get every pipe and structure in this network. Alright, so I'm going to get a whole bunch of labels at once. What I haven't done yet is renamed the structures to have uh, to have meaningful names so they look nice and neat like inlet 1, inlet 2 and STM01. So now that we have the labels in place, it's okay for us to change the names because the labels are dynamic and they will update automatically when we change the name. And the easiest name to change the name is to just use the properties command. So starting with this inlet right here, which if I look at my other inlets, the last one is inlet 04, so I'll call this one inlet 05. I'll just click on it, open the properties window, change the name to inlet-05 my last pipe was named pipe oh, I'm sorry STM06 so I'll use 
STM07 is my next pipe name. So that'll make this inlet 06. Notice how the labels are updating. Even though I already created them, I can change the name after creating the label, and the label's going to update. And then I get to the first manhole, which the last manhole number that I used is STM02, STMH02. So this will be STMH-03. Okay, so I can continue working my way down the storm system, renaming the pipes and structures, and then once that's all done, I'll probably, I'll probably want to drag them out to make them a little more readable so that they're not being uh, they're not conflicting with the other line work in the area. Some of these pipes probably would be a good idea to move them out into an open area as well until everything looks nice and neat. So I'm just going to spend a few moments now renaming all of those uh, items so that we can prepare to do the table. And after we rename the end wall, which I think is going to be end wall 2, because that's end wall 1. We've got everything renamed. So that bookkeeping part is um, not real fun, not real exciting, but it's, it's a part that we have to do. And, um, you know, you would think that there would be a way to automate it in the software, but the problem is we never, our design usually doesn't happen in the perfect order, so we very seldom create things in the order that they're going to be numbered. So um, even though the software does have ways of, of automating some of that numbering, it usually doesn't work in a, in a practical sense because we don't design in order. So now that we have everything named properly, we're ready to create a table. So now that all that information is in place, creating a table is relatively easy. I'm just going to go to the Add Tables, Pipe Network, Add Structure table. I um, want to make sure I use the right style, Sea Storm, Structure, and Pipe Data. Make sure I choose the right network. We'll do Storm 1 first, and I'll click OK, and drop that in the drawing. So there's my information for Storm 1. And then we'll do another table for storm 2 and just like that we've got all the information we need referenced for both storm pipe networks so that's our final task for this exercise and that completes the additional exercise for chapter 15